Welcome back. Sir David Davis, the Conservative MP for Goul and Pocklington, joins me now. Sir David, thank you very much for your time this morning. Maybe you can help me with something, because we've been debating this for the whole show, this issue of integration or the lack thereof, the problems on the streets, Britain burning with all these summer riots. And there's been lots of theories on why it's come to this. We've had Rupert Lowe, the reform MP, blaming Tony Blair... I've had Robert Jenrick in saying, well, is it the Tories' fault for not controlling immigration? What's the solution to this issue, David? I mean, do you agree with the analysis that some parts of the country haven't integrated as well as they could? Well, that's quite probably true, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't start by, by giving the rioters the benefit of the doubt on this. Let's, let's understand mm. they're hooligans, they're criminals, they're yeah. people looking for a fight. Uh, they're not. I mean, lots of people, I think about 80 percent of the public worry about immigration. They think it's too high. They don't think enough integration has taken place and so on. But none of this uh, uh, actually really relates to that. Re remember, the riots started with a lie or three lies. And they started after a terrible tragedy in Southport, which must have gone to everybody. So I've got a seven year old who obsesses yeah. with Taylor Swift as well. You know, you, yeah. you, 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 you're horrifying. Uh, Occurrence. And what did they do after that? We had people saying it was somebody on MI6 watch list. No, it wasn't. Uh, somebody who was an asylum seeker. No, it wasn't. Somebody who was a Muslim. No, it wasn't. And if, if I, I mean, I don't have that many criticisms of the government or the police on this, to be honest. Uh, but what I would say is perhaps they should have been faster to crush all that misinformation. To actually say, yeah. you know, you could. Because the youngster was sort of youngster, the young man uh, who's alleged to have done this was under 18, they got themselves hitched up in the law. Oh, we can't say anything about him. Well, you could. You could have said he's not Muslim. You could have said he's not an, uh, a migrant. You could have said, you know, he's not on any watch yeah. list of any. That would have been smarter. So I, I, I don't really accept going down the rabbit hole that this is principally about immigration. It's about a political battle which uses immigration as a weapon. Um, but, you know, the 80 or maybe more percent of the country have worries about immigration and they don't go out and throw bricks at policemen. Yeah, that's right. But also then maybe we haven't discussed this on today's show and it's a good point. Should the tech giants be doing more? Why do you yeah. get this misinformation not clamped down on? There's criticism in The Observer today. I mean, you could say, well, of course there would be. Uh, Elon Musk letting people like Tommy Robinson back onto that platform... I mean, should people be deplatformed? Should misinformation, as soon as it's circulated, just be removed from the internet? I'm, I'm generally not in favour of deplatforming because it very rapidly turns into a sort of general cancel culture problem. It, but frankly, also it also creates martyrs. But I am uh, I am sympathetic to the idea that we should treat these people like publishers. If your newspaper, your channel, publish yeah. something. Uh, which was an incitement to violence. Let's stick with the real crimes. If it's an incitement to violence, it should be held responsible. You know, they're not exactly poor, these organisations, and yet they tend to no. say, oh, it's too difficult. Oh, what if the Daily Telegraph said it was too difficult to, to control this terrible woman, Tommy, who writes these terrible things? <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, no. we, would, we would all laugh, not just at the joke. I'm on a very so... tight leash, as you well know, David. No, I agree <laughs> with you. Um, time is fast running out because I've had Robert Jenrick, your Conservative colleague in here, giving me his thoughts on all manner of different subjects. Making his, Do you pitch. Like... Making his pitch. Making his pitch. Yeah. Do you like the look of Robert Jenrick? I mean, he's been on some sort of Damascene conversion from Remainer to Brexiteer righty. Yeah, I mean, uh, my bigger worries with Robert is, you know, he was he was in charge of immigration for the period he is now criticising. But look... But he resigned. He resigned on it. Mm, mm, eventually. Who do, who, do you, uh, uh, who do you like the look I'm not, of, I'm David? not in the business here. I'm not on to criticise any of the candidates, be true for I, I, I just couldn't resist the temptation. But uh, I, they've all got, in my view, they've all got to prove something. They've all got to prove that they can be a good opposition leader. I mean, none of them, they've all been in government, frankly, for the last X years, uh, and it's an incredibly diff different job. I mean, look at the tough time William Hague had, the most brilliant speaker of his generation, right? Uh, fantastic at the dispatch box. And after four years of William, we got one extra seat. The country yeah. can't afford that. So what I want to see is how good they are at that. I'm not going to make up my mind until I've seen them strike some blows against Labour.
All right, David, we have to leave it there, but I will have you back on the show when you reveal who you'll be supporting if we can strike that deal. <laughs> OK, come September. All right.